Scotty Goff. Come on up here, Matt. Pastor Mike, right? Pastor Mike, give it up for Pastor Mike. Give it up for Pastor Mike. The first thing we told him not to do. I love the look on his face. Your first comedian, his name is, well, let me start over. <laughs> I love my intro, that was cool. Maybe you've seen him on Comedy Central. I'm thinking, yeah, the way you're saying it though, maybe they didn't. Maybe <laughs> he may or may not have been on Ed McMahon's next big star. Hey everybody, thanks for coming out. Welcome to Our Lady of Perpetual Bag and Saving. Welcome. <laughs> yes, we have visiting pastors from St. Pigley Wiggly here tonight. Give it up for Pastor Ray right there. Pastor Ray! He's one of those cool pastors dressed all in black. I keep a close watch on this heart of mine. Folks, <laughs> I, I went to school across the street from here. Yes, back in 1976, when dinosaurs roamed. That's, <laughs> I used to love when we'd give directions to people to come to our high school. Hey, we're going to the basketball game. How do you get there? What, to West Mesa? Okay, you go down Coors till all the lights, there's no more lights. <laughs> There'll be one light and it's the Lotta Burger and you turn there. Which way do I turn? There's only one way to turn, dude, just turn. <laughs> did it used to be a prison? That's what everybody used to say. Did it used to be a prison? Of course it did, it was a high school. They're all prisons. <laughs> Oh, it's, but this is, this, so this feels like home. I learned to ride my motorcycle, like, probably right here. I don't know, before this building was built. So that's cool. So this is it, man. This is Albuquerque, New Mexico. It could be worse. It could be Santa Fe. How many by applause grew up here in Albuquerque? No, Pastor Ray, no, no, where did you grow up? Denver, Denver. oh, okay. <laughs> Denver. That was cool, you're, you're like. <laughs> I keep a close watch on the. Denver. <laughs> do, we get, we, do we got any Santa Phoenicians here? Santa, I don't know. People from Paris, you call them Parisians. I'm going to call people from Santa Fe, Santa Parisians. We got any Santa Fians here? How long have you been here, Pastor Ray? Oh, 20, oh, so you got the hang of it by now. Yeah. Yeah. Santa Fe. You know, it's because of Santa Fe that the rest of the country thinks that we're crazy. Yeah, you know why? Because we're crazy. <laughs> There's a lot of differences, though, between if you live here, like if you grew up here and you grew up in Santa Fe, big differences. So I'll give you some good examples. So if you grew up in Albuquerque and the stucco of your house was breaking off, that was because you were poor. In Santa Fe, if the stucco of your house is peeling off, it's because your house is on the historic registry. In Albuquerque, if you live on a little dirt road, <laughs> that's because you're poor. In Santa Fe, it means my property's on the original Camino Real. <laughs> Coronado used the toilet in my backyard. I'm sure it was him. <laughs> you know they're crazy there because they're the ones that came up with the idea of so sobra. So they don't even, first off, they don't even know what to call it. Are you gonna go see Old Man Gloom? What? So Sobra. Well, make up your mind. Did you, it, it, last year it made it onto CNN, the, the burning of So Sobra. Yeah, yeah. They didn't help. 
<laughs> make people understand that we're not crazy here. They were perpetuating the myth. Because CNN didn't do the story like, look at the cultural relevance that's going on in Santa Fe and Mexico. No, they were doing a story more like, would you look at these crazy people and what they're doing? I tried to explain it to a friend of mine one time. He was going to be out here for, and he's like, so what is this Zozo bra thing? I'm like, so, so bra, here's, okay, here's what you do. This year's the 97th burning of, right? So he goes, okay, what is it? I go, okay, what they do is they build a big puppet. And he's like, what, like Big Bird Big? I'm like, no, 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 like King Kong Big. Oh, okay, then what? Well, then you're supposed to take a piece of paper and write down your glooms. My what? Your glooms, your sorrows, your sads. <laughs> you write it down, and then we shove it down the throat of Zozobra. <laughs> then we set him on fire. <laughs> and as he screams in agony, <laughs> we dance and laugh and just have the best time. By the way, Pastor Ray, I don't know who you hired to put up this brick wall, but I think you got tooked. <laughs> so, so, Pastor Ray, from Denver, now 26 years, I get it, you're one of us now, but where do you stand on this whole Colorado green chili, New Mexico green chili thing? Did you, did you hear immediately? <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend of mine from New York visiting here one time and he called me up. He's like, hey, I'm at this Mexican restaurant and I just ordered chili. I'm like, dude, wait till I get there. You don't want to fly solo on this thing. And he goes, well, I was expecting this bowl of like beans and meat and they gave me these two big green banana looking things. Like, ah, just go ahead. You'll be fine. He told me later, he's like, I took one bite <laughs> and I, it was, I, I started speaking in tongues <laughs> and all of them were burning. <laughs> Welcome to New Mexico where pain is a flavor. <laughs> Cause you know, I almost called you Dr. Ray. You know, Pastor Ray. You drive through Colorado. In fact, you drive through most places in the United States. Every 10 feet on the highway, you see a, a dead deer where someone hit it. Do you ever see a dead deer on the side of the highway in New Mexico? No. You know why? Because these crazy people take, pick it up, take it home, and eat it. <laughs> they don't care. That's what the chili's for. It kills all the germs and bacteria. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this weekend wraps up. And see, I'm proud of you people. You're here at the Bag and Save Chapel, and you're here. <laughs> Do a baptismal and a clean up, aisle three, clean up. You like going to the State Fair? I love the State Fair. Oh, maybe you don't. Okay, I'm sorry. Moving on. Something must have happened. <laughs> I don't care. I love it. I love it. It's I find it weird, though. I find the State Fair weird. The State Fair has changed for me as I've gotten older. Like when I was a kid, it was all about the rides, right? And then as I got like a high school age kid, then it got about the scary rides, right? And then like now that I'm older, it's just like about the food. And now I'm sure once I get even a little older, it's just I want to go see the turquoise. I don't even go where the rides are anymore. Do you? No, you know why? And maybe you're not brave enough to admit it, but it's because you're scared like I am. Would you go on the midway at the state fair on a Saturday night? You better not. It looks like a scene out of Escape from New York. Snake Pliskin comes in on a glider. Eye patch. <laughs> I got grewed up here. Grewed. I said it. I grewed up here. It's West Mesa. Uh, come on. <laughs> I grewed up here, and then like a dummy, I moved away from here, and I moved to Tucson, Arizona. You ever been there? 
Woohoo! They don't need chili there. It's hot without it. That have you ever been, Pastor Ray? Oh, I moved there in the summer because I am an idiot. I didn't know. I got out of the plane and the heat jumped on me. I thought this must be coming off the jet engine or something. It's hot. You ever seen those big cactus? That's how hot it is. You know it's hot when those big cactuses are like, I give up. <laughs> and this is my favorite thing in Arizona in the summer. People do this. Oh, it's hot. What's this feeble thing supposed to do? It's 118 degrees. Hey, dude, turn it down. It's getting cold. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My mom, living back here, was fascinated by the heat. She called me up all like every couple of days. She'd call me in the summer and go, "How hot is it there today?" And I go, it's going to be 114, Mom. Oh, my goodness, 114. Well, at least you can make good sun tea. <laughs> Mom, we make sun bread. What are you talking about? We do sun welding. That is not a safe place for people. No one's from there. Everyone was like me. Everyone was from somewhere else. No one is from Arizona. No one. I figured out why. What woman wants to be pregnant in Arizona? You may, it's 118 degrees and I'm nine months pregnant. <laughs> well, my water broke and it evaporated immediately. And I never got acclimated. I remember that first summer, and I was trying to get all my personnel, my, my finances set up, and I walk in, I walk into the bank, and I was just from my air-conditioned car. In a, <laughs> and the teller's just cheery, welcome, welcome to Big Cave, Arizona. Chipper, because she's been in AC all day. And I'm like, uh, is it like, it's all the time, it's hot. And she's like, well, at least it's a dry heat. I'm thinking, so is a pizza oven. I wouldn't want to live in one of those. <laughs> they have laws there that don't make sense, especially in the summer. Like, they, like here, they have the mandatory seatbelt law. It's ridiculous there. That's a stupid law. In the summer, you can't touch the buckle. <laughs> and if you get pulled over by a cop, they're like, sir, you got to buckle up. I can't because, sir, <laughs> if you don't buckle up, I'm going to run you in. Okay. <laughs> Somebody help me! Click. You end up looking like that Nazi spy from Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's... Fraulein, your fire is dying. <laughs> My dad lived in Torque, New Mexico. T or C, that's how it's spelled. Torque. <laughs> the high school fight song is that's a torque rich thank you I <laughs> my dad would drive all the way from torque to Tucson that's how it's spelled I don't care as soon as he'd get there, he's like, oh, Dad, what do you want to do? I want to go to Costco. <laughs> Dad, you drove five hours <laughs> to go to Costco. You are an hour and a half away from the Costco in El Paso. <laughs> I want to go to Costco. He loved going to Costco. You ever go? Do you ever go? Are you a Costco person? Yeah, love Costco. Just huge quantities of stuff you don't need. Take it home, throw it away in a week. God bless America. They don't even give you a shopping cart. They just give you like a flatbed truck. You see that? Yeah! Look, honey, a six-pack of sofa beds. We need one of those. 55-gallon drum of peanut butter. What am I, Elvis? I'll take two. Let's load them up. All the free samples. Loves me the free samples. You can eat all day for free in Costco. Just 
take a change of clothes. They won't recognize you. Just go around the corner, turn your hat around, take off your glasses. I like another bite of barbecue chicken sandwich, please. Weren't you just here? No, no. Ah. Everything's fine in Costco until you try to leave. You ever notice that? You can't just sashay your way out of a Costco. You got to go through that occupied Poland Nazi roadblock thing they got set up at the end. Yeah, they're popping up at Walmart now, too. They're catching on. <laughs> you try to get out of there, there's some guy in a Gestapo uniform. Guten Tag. I trust you've enjoyed your shopping experience here at Costco, yeah? It's the papers. We must see the papers. Your receipt indicates two loaves of bread, yet there are three in your truck. Explain, please. Well, that's because I was into the truck! <laughs> uh, I'm celebrating. That's why I'm here at Our Lady of Bag and Suave. I recently lost 70 pounds, people. Thank you. Yes, now I'm just fat. <laughs> I love that reason. I lost 70 pounds. Woo! You're not a big, disgusting pig anymore! Whatever. I didn't really do it. My wife did it. <laughs> she did it to me in the first place because she's a good cook. <laughs> Man, she's a good cook, a good baker. Then one day I come back from the doctor with my physical, and she's like, we got to do something about your weight. I think, you think I already did, baby. You're the one that did it. She put me on the keto. Have you done the keto? Oh, let me explain it to you. The keto. <laughs> yeah, the first time I did it, I actually gained 40 pounds. Well, it was tuck keto. And I think I was doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, so my wife figured this whole thing out, right? And she just figured she would just spring it on me without really telling me. Right? And the first thing I remember I caught her at was that cauliflower mashed potato scam. You ever had that little, <laughs> that little sin perpetrated on you? <laughs> my wife puts it on the plate. And, and I can always tell when my, my wife's trying to pull a fast one because she won't make eye contact with me. We were sitting there eating and mm, she's like, I'm like, what is this? What is, what is this? And she's like, it's mashed potatoes. I'm like, really? Really? Because I heard the blender running. What were you doing? Are they blended potatoes? No one needs to run the blender for potatoes. I take one bite. I'm like, ah, 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 I got some in my mouth. Ah. But it worked. I don't care. It worked. I had to lose the weight, man. I was just, I was, I was fat in Arizona. That was just unhealthy and scary. <laughs> Pull in your driveway and you just calculate the distance between your door and your front door. And... <sighs> I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> and no one in Arizona cares. They all go out and check the mail with no shoes on. It's amazing. The middle of summer, just... <laughs> I smell bacon. Who's making bacon? <laughs> now I'm on keto. I can have as much bacon as I want. <laughs> so I lost the weight. And I used to have a CPAP. You done the CPAP thing? Oh... My doctor put me on the CPAP. He's like, it's, it's a modern day miracle. You're going to start sleeping so good because you're going to finally get rest when you sleep. I'm like, that sounds amazing, doctor. Then they give me this thing. It looked like this drum set over here, right? With this big mask. Just you have no idea the power of the dark side. This big hose that I'm trying to strap to my head, right? As soon as I lost the weight and I got off the CPAP, that's when I started to sleep. You know why? Because every time I'd roll over, the dogs thought I was whistling for them. Just <laughs> no! No! I don't care, man. I just, I had, I couldn't stop eating. I still can't, but now it's the keto food. I can eat as much as I want. But oh my gosh, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's my jeans. Not these jeans, these fit. Maybe it's my other jeans. I have a very interesting ethnicity. I'm half Scottish and half Mexican. And a hush falls over the room. That's amazing. Just, ha, uh-oh. That means he's an alcoholic who's going to try to steal our stereo. Just... 
Walk away slow lie. Half Scottish, half Mexican, my family battle cry. What will you do without your freedom? Ese. <laughs> half Scottish, half Mexican, my. <laughs> you don't know what it's like waking up on, <laughs> in my house on a cold morning and finding oatmeal in your menudo. And you don't find a lot of people. There should have been a whole race of people like me in the in the Greenlands, in the Scotlands. That would have been cool. We'd have just been one guy up on a mountaintop. Orale hee I knew about the ethnicity thing, but I wasn't 100% sure until my wife gave me that 23 and Me thing for Christmas a couple years ago, like last year. You ever done that? Have you done that, the, the DNA thing? Oh, it's amazing. You get this little packet in the mail, right? And you open it up, you're thinking, this must be really something super scientific. There's a little computer in here. There's got to be something. There's a test tube. That's all that was in there was a, a test tube this big, and you got to fill it up with, with spit. <laughs> You ever tried filling up a test tube this big with spit? It took me all afternoon. Mm-hmm. Drip. Mm-hmm. Drip. Mm-hmm. There's nothing left. Send it in. It turns out that I am 100% out of saliva. And I thought it was going to be this big monumental thing when I got the results because I've seen the commercials. Have you seen the commercials? Those people are always like, they find, I was looking at the, at the results and there was a little green leaf and I clicked on it and it turns out that my great, great, great grandmother actually escaped from Nazis and rode on the Titanic and was saved by a dolphin. I'm like, wow! My results were nothing like that. Then I started thinking, what are my descendants going to say years from now with this 23 and me thing? Yeah, so there's a little green leaf, and I clicked on it, and it turns out that my great-great-grandfather used his student loan in college to buy a motorcycle. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> who's, a motor, who's a motorcycle person? Who's a motorcycle Somebody, you are, of course you are, look at you. (laughs) Mongo like motorcycle. What kind of motorcycle do you ride? Of course you do! Road King! That's you, man. Just Just making your neighbors mad on a Saturday morning. Just. Oh. <laughs> Let's go riding this weekend. I still have my motorcycle. Let's go. Me and you, bro. 1972 Yamaha 125 Enduro. Let's go. I don't care. I love that little motorcycle. I've had it since high school. I love it. I don't care. These guys, they're the ones that care. <laughs> I'm just on my motorcycle riding around Albuquerque. I love this. Freedom. <laughs> Get your motor running. Then a, a Harley will pull up next to me. and there, I look over and there's just a beard with arms coming out of it. Just... <laughs>
I don't care. I love my Moodle. I, lo I, want, I, I like my little motorcycle because I feel I can't get as much trouble if I had like a big road king or one of those, just those incredible, just like, nah, nah, those motorcycles just scream at, nah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Relax! We're both going to Walmart. What do you want? My, and my wife, she doesn't like it too much that I ride my little stupid motorcycle. And she's like, she, my wife loves pointing out my age. Like, because I'm 11 years older than my wife. And she's constantly like, you know, you're older. <laughs> Shut up. If you fall down, you'll get hurt. You'll get hurt. I, one time in high school, I hit a dog. That was high school. <laughs> if a butterfly goes in front of you now, you're going to end up in the hospital. <laughs> I do. I'm, I'm, get, I'm, I'm turning 57 years old next week. <laughs> again, again. Woo! He's old. That guy's old. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't, I don't mind being old. I don't care. I, I do notice things happening, though. Like, I'm starting to get the memory stuff. What do you call it? The memory um, loss? Yeah, the memory loss. I'm starting to get. <laughs> I know it was getting bad. Like, my wife would call me, What are you doing today? I'm going to Costco with um, um, Dad. That's what I'm going. I'm going with Dad. Last year for Halloween, a friend of mine said, hey, are you going to dress up for Halloween? I'm like, yeah, I got a costume. I ordered it. I'm going to dress up like that alien from that movie. Um... He goes, alien? I'm like, that's it! <laughs> I don't care. I'm getting older. What do I care? Just things happen when you get older. You'll understand someday, young, young Jedi. You don't know. <laughs> what is it? Look at you with your, you got the shaved. You don't care. You don't, like, you just, everything's roses for you <laughs> it's because you don't know what it's like to get older and then suddenly your world raw revolves around having to go to the bathroom that's all I think about anymore where's the where's the bathroom I gotta go I gotta go I gotta go pee pee where I gotta go <laughs> if I go to a movie I gotta sit in that seat right there I can't see there where I see the screen, nope, gotta sit right there because I'm not gonna cross in front of people. I'm not gonna ask people's permission to go make water. I'm not gonna do it. That's what happens all the time though. Like I'll go to the mall with my wife and we'll be at the food court. And she's like, well, let's go back. I wanna look at those shoes. I'm like, okay, but first let me go to the men's room. She's like, oh, wait, you gotta go potty? And I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm 57 years old. Don't talk to me that way. I'm a grown man. Yes, I gotta go potty. I had to sip a Pepsi 17 seconds ago. <laughs> and the older I get, the more, I'm starting to understand my dad now. Because the older I get, the more I hate today's music. It just is, every year, it's horribler and horribler. Like, Young Jedi, what is your name? Dominic, what do you, what do, you do, Dominic? You're a nose trader? Oh, Illustrator! Really? Oh my gosh! That's wow! I've, okay, cool. Who do you illustrate? Are you a graffiti artist? Do you just walk around? <laughs> I'm an illustrator, bro. You know what I mean? Just, what kind of music? <laughs> kind of music do you listen to there, Dynamic? 90s rock. That's okay. I like that. Yeah. I can't stand. Oh, my gosh. And my kids want to play it. And I make them wear their headphones. And then I get mad at them because they're wearing their headphones. Because I don't want to hear their music. I say, put on your headphones. And then I ask them something. And they don't hear me. I'm like, take off your headphones. <laughs> then plug it in the rap music. I'm like, put on your headphones. I don't, th there's no way I, I the rap they, they left a C off of that word. That is not. There's never going to be a time where I'm going to appreciate. <laughs> you know what, though? I'm saying that, and then I'm reminded right across the street, the spring of 1980, 
there I was, man. Just do, 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 I said a hip hop, a hip, a hip to the hip, hip hop, and you don't stop rocking to the bang, bang, boogie, said up, jump, the boogie to the rhythm of the boogity beat. Now what you hear is not a test, I'm rapping to the beat. And me, the groove, and my friends, we're going to try to move your feet. Well, now, I am one to Mike, and I'd like to say hello to the black, to the white, the red, and the brown, the purple, and yellow. But first, I got a, a bang, bang, a boogie to the boogie, said up, jump, the boogie to the bang, bang, boogie, you rock. You don't stop. Rock your rhythm. That'll make your body rock. What are they singing about? For 39 years, I've been trying to figure it out. <laughs> and I don't care because I love it. <laughs> All right. How am I doing on time? Okay, cool. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I don't care. I don't care. So let me explain to you what's happening in my life as we speak. As I stand here on the blessed stage of Her Lady of Discount Grockeries. Today at 6.30 this morning, my very first grandson was born in Albuquerque. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. I... I am a grandfather. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm freaking out a little bit because it's just, it's just, who's a grandfather? Are you a grandfather? Are you a grandfather? Of course, you're a road kick. <laughs> Here comes grandpa. What's my kid? My grandkid. Hing, ning, 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 ning. Here comes grandpa. How many, how many do you got, sir? Three? Is he right? I said a hip hop, a hippie, a hippie to the hip, hip hop, and you don't stop for rocking with the bang bang boogie set up, jump the boogie. You have nine? Wow. Do you even know their names? <laughs> I just figured if I had nine grandkids and someone would go, what are your grandkids' names? I'd have to get the banjo off the wall. <laughs> well, there is Bill and a Bob and a Ted and on a nee 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 doo doo little doo 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 you don't have any grandkids. No. <laughs> Is this your hunk of hunk of burning love right here? Yeah. Okay. Look, did you see the look she gave? <laughs> men get nervous when I start asking them those questions because men are stupid. <laughs> it never fails. I'll be doing a show somewhere and I go, sir, is that your wife? And the guy always goes... You got any kids? How many kids? How old are the kids? When did we buy the house? Was that 72? Okay. I got nine kids. Well, there was a little bit of a ten and down. <laughs> Pastor Ray, my grandfather was a Baptist minister. <laughs> nice. We're not that impressed. Nice. So my grandfather was a Baptist minister. My mom was a devout Catholic. That makes me a cactus. <laughs> it's either that or a bathlick, and that sounds gross.
But the problem is, so, so one Sunday we'd go to my grandfather's church, and then the next Sunday we'd go to my mom's church, and nobody in my family ever bothered to tell me what the difference was. I was just confused every Sunday. First Sunday, there's grandpa in a dark suit just telling a story, <laughs> telling one of his anecdotes. Well, one time me and old Skeeter, we went hunting. And somehow he'd wrap that up into a story about Jesus. I don't know how he'd get there. And then the next Sunday, there we were, and there was candles burning, and a guy in a robe, and hey, un requiem, Nestle's is the very best. So my grand, what's your, what's your, my grandfather's process is every Wednesday he would lock himself in his study and he would really be in there till like Saturday. Then he'd come out and he'd be having a sermon. What's your process, uh, uh, Pastor Ray? What's your process? Well, I go to JesusRocks.com and I download the PDF for the week. Tuesday through Saturday. Yeah. My my grandpa was Wednesday through Saturday. He was faster than you. Um, <laughs> ka to the Lord. My grandmother, his wife, was the toughest man I ever met. <laughs> and I say that seriously because she was. She, her and her sister built a cabin in the Hamas Mountains by hand during World War II, right? She would chop wood. My grandmother had her own chainsaw. It was herbal scented, but she had her own. No, she had her own. She would chop wood. My grandmother would hunt every year. She'd get a deer license. And back then, when you got a deer license, it was not like today. You'd get a deer license. It also came with a turkey and a bear validation. Because I guess back in the 60s, if a deer was going to die, a turkey and a bear were going to have to go down with them. <laughs> and I used to always think, okay, okay, turkeys, I've seen turkeys. <laughs> I've seen them. But a bear, why would you why, why would you need with okay so one time right my grandmother goes up hunting right she comes home she comes to our house we live right next door our dogs are going crazy she jumps out of the truck and she's totally disheveled and dirty she never looked that way she was always just very proper and her with her gun over her shoulder and my dad comes running outside and he looks in the bed of the truck and in the bed of the truck is a black bear that my grandmother shotted <laughs> She shooted a black bear. My dad's looking at it. He's like, Mom, how did you even get this thing in the truck? She took a rope and tied it to the back feet of the bear, took it over the cab of the truck, wrapped it around a tree, and then back to the bumper of the truck, and then backed the truck up and scooped the bear up. And she's like, now you got to help me. we got to dress this bear. And my dad's like, what are we going to do with the bear? She goes, we're going to eat him. So, and my grandfather wanted none of this. My grandfather was so different than her. I, when, when he passed away, we were cleaning out his desk, and I found a journal, and it said Thanksgiving Day, 1957. And this is all it said. It said we had football for breakfast, football for lunch, and football for dinner, because that was my grandmother. She loved football. She loved hunting. Well, he wanted nothing to do with this bear situation, right? So I go over to my grandparents' house, and in the backyard, they got the bear hanging up in the tree. This weird, this weird naked bear. You think it is scary? Try living next door to that. My grandfather comes out of his study. He's got a handful of crackers. I'll never forget. And he's eating the crackers. And he's looking at this scene out of Dante's Inferno or something. And he just, he looks up and he's like, thank you, Father. And he runs back in his study and he locked himself in there. So the next Sunday, we're at his church. And my grandfather gets up and he goes to the pulpit. I'll never forget. And he says, so the Lord created the earth. And he looked back at it and he said, that is beautiful. But I want more color. 
So he created grass, right? And the grass was beautiful, but it was lonely. So he created the deer. And the deer ate the grass. And this made the grass sad. So the Lord created the beast. And the beast would eat the deer. Now that made the deer sad. So the Lord created man. And man would eat the beast. And then one day when it was the man's time to go be with the Lord, he would go out and he would lay in the grass and the grass would eat the man and the circle would start all over again. And I looked at that and I'm like, you're a genius. He took that story of the bear and turned it into a sermon. If that had been me, I'd have been like, so bears eat things and then old ladies sh shoot them. <laughs> so don't do that and be Jesus loves you. Amen. <laughs> so I was thinking about that today and it dawned on me. I look back at my grandfather and he always looked so aged and I don't mean necessarily old. I just mean aged. He looked wise and his face looked like it had a hundred miles on it and he looked cool and I loved him but today I became the grandfather and I started I looked in the mirror and I'm like do I look like my grandfather because I don't see it when I look in the mirror I still see the kid who got the very first set of Hot Wheels back in 1969 I was that kid the kid who stood in line to see Star Wars five times in 1977 that's who I see and then I started thinking, well, are other good people going to start seeing me as being the old man? And then I realized, I don't care. If you want to see me as being an old man, go for it. <laughs> if I could be half the man my grandfather was, I'll be happy with that. And if people think I'm an old man, here's what I got to say to that. I said a hip hop, a hip, a hip to the hip, hip hop, and you don't stop rocking to the bang, bang, boogie. Said up, jump, the boogie to the rhythm of the boogity beat. I said a M-A-S, a T-E-R, a G with a double E. I go by the unforgettable name of the man they call the Master G. Well, my name is known all over the world by all the foxy ladies and the pretty girls. <laughs> I'm going down in history as the baddest rapper that there ever could be. Well, you see the highs and you see the lows and the beat, it works its way in your toes and you're popping your fingers and stopping your feet and moving your body while you're sitting in your seat and you rock and you don't stop. Rock your rhythm till you make your body rock. I don't mean to brag, I don't mean to boast, but I like hot butter on my breakfast toast. What's up? Oh, baby, bubba. Oh, baby, bubba. Do the boogity, bang, bang, a boogity. With the beat, beat so unique. Come on, everybody, and dance to the beat. Bow, bow, bow. Ba -dow, bow, 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 bow. Everybody. Bow, bow, bow. Ba -da -ba -bow, bow, 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 Hip, hop. No, just kidding. All right. I got to wrap this McGillicuddy up. We got to clear these chairs out. We got the... West Mesa prom coming in here in about 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with a little gift. I'm going to leave you with a jokey joke. I didn't write this. I didn't come up with this. Someone told me, and I'm going to tell you. That's how jokes work. But this is actually my favorite joke in the world. You could tell this joke, Pastor Ray, at some place. Church, I don't care. So old man, and I'm thinking about this today because, again, I'm the grandpa today. This old man and this old woman are sitting, rocking in their chairs on the porch of the house. And the old woman looks over and she goes, honey, if I was to pass away, do you think you'd get remarried? The old man looks at her and he goes, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to be lonely, you know. I want to be companionship. I, I, I think I might get remarried again. She said, I think that'd be a good idea. I'd be okay if you got remarried. She goes, how about this house? Would, would you sell this house? And he goes, well, you know, we built this house. We have a lot of memories here. All the kids' Christmases here and the tree in the backyard. I think I'd have to keep the house. And she said, yeah, I think you should keep the house. What about the furniture? Would you keep the furniture? And he's like, well, you know, the furniture it goes with the house. We picked every piece of that furniture and we agonized over it. I would have to keep the furniture. And she'd say, yeah, I like that furniture in the house. What about our bed? Would you keep the bed? He goes, oh, no, 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 no. That's too personal. I'd get a new bed. She goes, yeah, that's a good idea. You should probably get a new bed. She said, what about my golf clubs? Would you let her use my golf club? He goes, no, of course not. She's left-handed. <laughs> Folks, thanks for coming out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Pastor Ray, everybody.